This here is another viewer's broken gaming PC. And I have a bit of a confession to make. This is actually one of my PCs. I guess I'm kind of sort of a viewer of my own channel. I wanted to stick with the, the same title, of course, for this playlist. But uh, yeah, I kind of sort of took advantage of the opportunity to create another one of these videos. But the f fact of the matter is, I have no idea what's wrong with this thing. I really have no clue. I was in the process of setting something up to run some benchmarks. And in the middle of it all, the system refused to post. I, I don't know why. Now, a bit of backstory. This build here has been repurposed several times. In fact, if you remember back to our Ryzen 5 5600G sponsored video, this case, this platform essentially housed that APU. Now, obviously I've removed that since then because I've got a discrete card in here now. It wouldn't really make much sense to have a 5600G in here with a powerful graphics card like the 6600 XT, even though it's not crazy overkill, 68 or 6900 XT territory. It's still a really good card, especially in 2021, if you can find one for a decent price. And right now, most of them are being scalped to living hell. Uh, the other thing I replaced here was the cooling solution for the CPU. So now we've got a 120mm AIO, and if you recall from our this is what a dead AIO pump looks like video, well, this is it. Essentially, this is how that build looked when we tested uh, the dead pump scenario. And since then, the only thing I've really done is install graphics drivers. That's literally it. I haven't touched anything else. I wanted to install graphics drivers because I wanted to stress the graphics card uh, in something like 3D Mark Time Spy. Obviously you want the most up-to-date graphics drivers for such a test. And upon rebooting the system, which kind of did on its own, the system refused to post. I, I really don't know what's wrong with it. Actually, I should clarify, it posts, but then we get no picture out after that. It's, it's a, it's a really weird one, I'll have to show you. I really hope we can fix this thing. I also hope that uh, you have a chance to learn a thing or two, assuming that whatever ends up being the fix is something you haven't seen before. And it might be. That's the joy of this playlist. You never know what you're gonna get. Stay with me. Oh, Maze is hosting a chance to win a wicked fast Tesla Model S Plaid by supporting a nonprofit and their mission of empowering millions to take action against environmental and social issues. For a mere $10 donation, you can be entered for a chance to win one of the fastest accelerating production cars ever made. That's 400 miles of range. This is an electric car after all, zero to 60 in under two seconds and the quarter mile in under 10 all with instant torque from electric motors. This Model S Plaid is ready to rip up the road, if I do say so myself, with taxes and shipping included for US winners. And again, all it takes to enter for a chance to win is a $10 donation. You can also make a positive impact on the environment, where Charity Reverb seeks to eliminate millions of single-use plastic water bottles at concerts and eliminating tens of thousands of tons of CO2 through their Music Climate Revolution campaign. So to potentially win this loaded Tesla and support Reverb in their charitable endeavors at the same time, be sure to visit omaze.com forward slash Greg Sellers. You can also find this linked in the video description. I'm gonna make it a point to not treat this video any different than I would any other episode in the Fix or Flop playlist. The only real caveat here is that this is my system, not someone else's. I do know the symptoms and they are repeatable no matter what I try, no matter how many times I reset, I cannot get this particular symptom that I'm seeing, and you'll see it in a second, to disappear. Uh, also, for those who don't know what this playlist is about, we reach out to folks in and around the Orlando, Florida area and offer to fix their systems for free. So long as they're okay with us filming these processes, we don't charge them anything. We can monetize these videos and I don't feel like offloading any of that cost to them. I just prefer them to be happy, maybe spread the word and we get other people s submitting inquiries about having their builds fixed and we can continue making these videos. So, you know, the cycle repeats. That's the idea anyway. And even if I was charging, there's no way I really could justify charging myself. That's a bit weird. So I do know the symptoms, but that's as far as I've gone. I figured why not make a fix or flop video because I'm as in the dark as you guys are at this point. So here's what happens. Power on the system and everything looks fine at first. Now there is a, a debug, a series actually of debug LEDs at the top right of this board. I'll show you those up close here in a second. But the system posts, right? We get to that, that's great. Now it says preparing automatic repair because I've reset this thing so many times. Let me get my keyboard. So we get to this point, we click restart, and you know, the computer does what it normally does. At this point, I would expect it to post, right? There's nothing wrong with the system. In fact, I, again, I was only installing a graphics driver before all of this happened. So I know the system works. We used it before in the AIO video. It's the exact same build. 
and uh, yeah, you just get this. A black screen. No, I mean, it, like, you know, if, if it really shouldn't be this complicated. If you install graphics drivers on a system that has no previous graphics drivers, okay, and you restart your system, you would expect that the system would work, right? But we don't get that here. Instead, we get a very confusing debug LED notification. I don't, I don't know what this is. Maybe someone else knows. I can't find this anywhere in the motherboard, uh, anywhere else online. In fact, I've looked all over forums to find this exact symptom. It's to no avail. So I'm gonna reset this system so you can see how the debug LED cycles. So that light there, that red light is a CPU light. That white light was the VGA light, and that green light you see there is the boot light. That's what you want to see. That's good stuff. But then we get to this part here where the boot light shuts off and yeah, nothing, still nothing, still nothing. By the way, screen's black. And there we go. Amber LED, orange LED, whatever color you want to call it. It just flashes. Now that LED indicator is for DRAM. Of all things, what the heck? Uh, why would DRAM be causing this specific issue? Now I've tried multiple monitors, multiple ports, including these display ports over here, we get nothing. And while I would normally try plugging the HDMI cable directly into the motherboard, this CPU, the Ryzen 5 2600, assuming again it's a 26, I'm not sure if it's a 2600 or 3600, but either way, neither of those chips has an integrated graphics processor, which means we'll get no picture out no matter what. So if the only thing I did prior to experiencing this issue was install graphics drivers, is it possible that my graphics card is to blame? Should we swap this out first? I think what I'm gonna do first, only because we've got the debug LED telling us that it's to blame, I'm gonna switch out DRAM. You can't go wrong with Corsair Vengeance LPX memory. We'll try just one stick in multiple slots to see if that fixes the issue. By the way, this build was using two silicon power DDR4 sticks. These were actually pretty cheap, which is why I wanted to throw them in our budget 5600G build at the time. It'd be a shame if uh, this was to blame. But alas, with this dim that we know works in slot A2 as a standalone DDR4 stick, we still get the same issue. Blinking DDR4 amber LED. And same thing for the dim in slot B2. So we don't have a case here of a dead memory channel. And we're still stuck with this black screen after the system post. Again, I'd be a little less concerned if this happened before the system post. Like maybe we just got a black screen the whole time. Like it never turned on but it does and then it doesn't. So is this software related? That's what I'm really not looking forward to. It would obviously make sense, right? To assume that something software related went wrong, especially after installing graphics drivers, graphics software. I suppose no one should really be surprised by that. But why is the DRAM LED light blinking the way it is? I don't get it. It's obviously not DDR4 related because we swapped out those modules with perfectly working ones. In fact, we just stuck to a single dim in case there was a dead channel and still nothing. But if it is software related, how on earth would we get around this? I mean, we can't get into the operating system to fix what is probably wrong with the operating system, which is why it's not booting. So what I think this is, because it posts and then the screen goes black, is it's trying to initialize the boot drive and for some reason it can't. I suppose we could try clearing the CMOS, but I don't really think that's gonna, this doesn't really have to do with any BIO setting. I mean, whatever. We can try it. I don't think it's gonna work. If it does, I'm gonna feel really stupid. A few moments later. Still nothing. So what are we gonna do here? We can't get into the operating system. So we can't change software settings or, or software settings that are OS dependent. Maybe we could just swap the graphics card. I don't really know what that's gonna do. We do obviously have, at least I think we have, Radon graphics drivers installed. We should have them installed because that's the last thing I did before the system crapped itself. But swapping to a GT710, though it's far from optimal, will at least give us a chance to get into the operating system. If we, if we can get there, we can then DDU and start fresh. I think that'll fix the problem long term. I just, I don't really know what else to try at this point. I could also try putting the 5600G in here and just booting from integrated graphics, seeing if that works. So we'll try the discrete card first because that's a little easier and then we'll move on to the APU if we need to. Let's disconnect supplemental power. Slide this card on out and slide our puny GT710 in, which again, we've confirmed works. Will this work? That is the big question. I'm hoping that whatever drivers supposedly corrupted this card, preventing it from working properly, are 
exclusive to this card. So the fact that we switched to Nvidia here might, yeah, there, there we go. That's it. So there's proof, and I'm still kind of baffled by this. There's proof that just by using AMD Auto Detect and allowing the drivers that AMD says you should install to be installed, it's possible you might end up with a black screen. And if you don't have a secondary graphics card laying around, or maybe you don't have an integrated graphics processor in your CPU, you could be SOL. And that's, that's really not good. Um, it, it's not a very common thing. This is probably the first time I run into it that I can recall. But I, I just, I don't know. I'm at a loss for words. It's a very strange issue for something software related to mimic hardware symptoms. You know, I'd be willing to bet that a lot of folks troubleshooting this exact issue we're experiencing would have concluded that this graphics card was bad. And I'm not saying that to try to toot my own horn or, or put myself in a certain light. I, I'm just speaking very matter of factly here. Most people aren't gonna go this deep into the troubleshooting. They're gonna see that the card is not sending a picture out when the Windows boot volume is loaded and they're gonna conclude that the graphics card is bad. Now there are a few telltale signs that should dissuade you from concluding that it's graphics card, and that's what I wanna talk about here. Uh, so if you experience something like this in the future, you'll know where to look. This board has, again, those four debug LEDs. For whatever reason, the DRAM LED was the one flashing when we got the no picture out scene that you would see after the post. You would expect that the VGA light would be the light to flash in this scenario, right? I mean, it ultimately was the graphics card, right? Or at least the driver associated with the graphics card because swapping it to a GT710 fixed the issue. You have to understand what these debug LEDs are designed to do. They are there to test the integrity of the hardware. They are not there and there's no way that they could ever test the software baked into a boot volume because these drives haven't been initialized yet, right? Which is why when you turn your system on right away, you're only getting VGA drivers. You're not getting the, the full like 4K, you know, crazy high refresh rate experience that you would when you boot into Windows because by then your graphics drivers have kicked in. They don't kick in before that because your boot volume hasn't been initialized and that's where your graphics driver is installed. So because the VGA light wasn't flashing, that should tell us that there is nothing inherently wrong with the integrity of this card physically. Hardware wise, everything is fine. And we still get picture out when we post, which means that something is happening when the Windows boot drive or boot volume is initialized. What is on the boot volume that would suddenly prevent this card from working? The graphics driver, right? So when the graphics driver kicks in, we suddenly get no picture out. That should tell us that it's the graphics driver itself to blame and not the card. So you have to think a bit intuitively about this before just quickly jumping on the bandwagon that you know your card is dead. Oh, my graphics card died, I need a new one. How many times you want to bet that's been the blame here when in reality, the cards were just fine. So what we're going to do is DDU everything. We're going to completely new graphics drivers of any kind and then allow the system to shut itself down. And then at that point, we can safely swap back in our RX 6600 XT. So we have AMD selected support. We see Radon Graphics here. This is what we suspect is to blame. And we're gonna wanna click clean and shut down because remember, we still have our GT710 in here. Now I'm crossing everything I got that this works. Otherwise, I will be at a total loss. Just um, at a dead end at this point. If this doesn't fix the issue, we're probably gonna have to just swap the drives out. I don't know what else to do. We know it's not motherboard or CP related. It's not power supply related. It's just uh, graphics drivers and the graphics card. Oh, okay, that was really quick, wow. All right, so it works. Now let's um, cross our fingers when it comes to reinstalling graphics drivers and hope we don't totally fry our system. So this software is really cool because if you're not sure about what uh, driver to install, this will kind of suggest it for you. Uh, so you can see RX 6600 XT, we've got the recommended I'm assuming this is the driver version here. And uh, we're just gonna click install, same as last time. And all right, that's great. I always uncheck this and we'll click restart. Let's hope uh, we don't have the same issues last time. Now that is what I'm talking about. Well over 100 FPS and 1080p in Dirt 5, uh, th this is how I'd expect the system to perform. And we actually can get it to perform now because we were able to get a successful graphics driver install this time around. Still not sure what exactly happened the first time. I, I didn't do anything differently. You saw what I did. It's a very straightforward installation process. But yeah, for whatever reason, it didn't work the first time. And hopefully if you run into this in the future, this video 
will show you how to get around it. Unfortunately, unless you have an APU in your rig, this will probably require another graphics card. That's why I keep this GT710 handy because it's so cheap and it, it really helps. It really kicks in in cases where your CPU doesn't have an integrated graphics processor. And all that's left to do now is swap back in our original kit of DDR4. Well, how eventful. I'm really glad I decided to make this a full-fledged fix or flop episode. I know I'm not, again, a, a conventional viewer. I'm not doing this for someone else in the area, uh, but hopefully this was still a learning experience for some, maybe just entertaining. I definitely learned a thing or two. I've never had an issue that I can recall with AMD's auto detect tool. I never have, and I've used it for almost every AMD graphics card I've put into a system, with the exception of the few that are sent before public release. I have to use beta drivers in those cases, but uh, it's it's a shame that this happened with the auto detect tool, but I, I think it's a very rare isolated thing. It's likely it might've been corrupted by some other program that was on the drive, ah, who knows? The fact is DDU got rid of it for us, and we fortunately had an extra card to throw in to allow us to get into the operating system. We didn't need to reinstall Windows. That would have that would have sucked. So if your system posts, you get a picture through your graphics card, but then when Windows starts to load up from your boot drive, your screen goes black, might be a sign that your graphics driver is nuked. That's the conclusion I'm drawing from this. I think once we narrowed down what the issue probably was, it was fairly easy to fix. We just needed that GT710 in there. Can any other graphics solution would have worked, including, I expect, an APU. So if you had a 5600G in here or a 2400G or whatever, you could have just booted directly into that and then uh, you could have swapped your graphics card back in once you DDU'd. But uh, you have to get into your operating system in order to display driver uninstall. So it, it's kind of a catch 22 there. Uh, and that's again, another reason why I recommend just having a really cheap burner card. If you run into issues like this often, maybe you're building PCs quite a bit uh, for clients or just for yourself or family members, having a cheap graphics card will come in handy if you suspect that the card already in your system is to blame, or maybe again, like in this case, you just have a faulty driver. For whatever reason, it just decided not to play well with the card in the system. And to get around that, you have to remove the card so that the graphics driver doesn't see the card and create whatever issue it was creating. So yeah, things became quite clear, at least for me, once we got around the DDR4 LED blinking thing. I don't know, that, that totally took us in the wrong direction. We swapped RAM for really no reason, but uh, it was quick. It didn't take too long. It didn't take too much of our time in the troubleshooting process. So it's not like it was a huge loss there. And it was more or less narrowing down what could be to blame. I suspected either the graphics card or the DDR4 based on the symptoms we were seeing. But uh, once we narrowed it down to the card, we could have just stopped. And if we had stopped at the card, we would have wanted to RMA the card, right? It takes several days to weeks. It's just a big hassle. If your card's not broken, why would you want to RMA it? So doing a bit more investigation, thinking a bit intuitively about how this card is behaving, how we get picture out for the post, but we don't get picture out when the boot drive's initialized tells us that it's probably not the card itself, but whatever software is on the boot drive that's trying to initialize or take advantage of the card. That being the graphics driver in this case, DDUing, easy as that. Once we had the GT710 in there, fix the issue. Yeah, what more can I say? If you guys enjoyed this one, be sure to let me know in the comment section below. Give this one a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. And I suppose I'll catch you in the next one. We do, I think, have one more Fixer Flop episode in season one, and we'll be kicking off season two pretty soon, probably right after Christmas, probably early January, we'll start season two of Fix or Flop. And we do have many entries in the queue, so I'll try to load up as many of those ahead of time so that you don't have to wait too long in between episodes. My name is Greg, thanks for troubleshooting with me.